Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video I will begin by trying to send a probe out to the moon to fulfill this satellite in a polar orbit of the moon contract that will have some science and I intend to try to bring it back because I think I saw that there was some value to bringing some science back. Now uh, it's not the goo container or the science junior of course, uh, we're talking about the little ones. I, I might be mixing myself up though, so we'll see. Anyway, probably, maybe I'm just mixed up with stock or something. Anyway, but we will try to bring it back because then we can fulfill this successful re-entry contract. So it'll just take care of both of those anyway, uh, whether we get extra science or not. Uh, so, yep, that will be the first thing. And I'm also looking at the Milden situation, uh, but that might be difficult. Uh, and we'll see about the Mars window for that contract or maybe the Venus window for that contract. But first, uh, somebody had said that if I just get rid of this contract, cancel the contract, it, uh, we might not bite the whole failure cost. We'll see. We can see our reputation up there. Let's just find out. And no, it takes the entire cost. Uh, the, that, that does, it is the full failure cost there. Not 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 uh, head to the reputation though. Interestingly enough, we get a lot of rescue contracts, and so this is a bit of a problem. Uh, if they are all in the same orbit, we could probably get them all into the links. The links has space for three right now, um, but if they're in different orbits, that's complicated. So I'll try it though. Uh, we've got a lot of time to complete it. We'll just pick up, uh, oh, we, we don't have enough space for extra. Let me just see where Lodbin is to compare. Now, Milden wasn't in a very good orbit. I wonder where Lodbin is. Lodbin is also partly in the atmosphere, uh, but let's see. Yes, they're in the same equatorial orbit, uh, perfectly equatorial. So it's very stock. The situation is very stock, which makes it more difficult because, of course, Cape Canaveral is up there. So we're going to have to do a major inclination adjustment. But that might be an interesting way to test a a flyby craft of the moon. I don't know. Could that We do need to do a moon flyby at some point with crew. I'll think about that. Anyway, first of all, let me introduce you to our moon satellite or attempted moon satellite. I've just called it Moonsat, even though we're not keeping it around the moon, and it's on an NSC 2060 launcher, which we have been using. And you can see the heat shield, we are using the early controllable core, parachutes, a little bit of fuel to control re-entry, but that's not a whole lot. It doesn't have any uh, antenna outside of the probe core, so we're gonna have to watch out for that. Um, so we'll have to prime it, but uh, this little stage here has relay antennae. No control core though. Uh, but yeah, so it's not gonna have independent control. We've got whip antennas just in case. Uh, we've got a hypergolic engine here that's burning the MMH and M uh, Mon 3. And then we also have the RCS blocks like that. Uh, this is hydrazine. So these are just little hydrazine thrusters. And then the SE uh, 2060 rocket, which has the SE 2060 engine at the bottom and then the Engine 2 Vacuum, which we have seen a few times. Oops, not that one, this one. Uh, so we've seen all that a few times, and hopefully it'll work out. So yeah, that's only a 35-day build time, and so we will just go ahead and make sure that the fairings are in the right place. And build one, and see how that works out for us. Uh, we've got a lot of Delta V in the little satellite. It's going to have a long burn time, but that was probably more efficient than trying to push more than 7,100 meters per second in this stage. So I could have put extra engines on the stage underneath the recovery portion of the satellite, but we'll see. The, we have to get into a polar orbit around the moon, so we have to watch out for that. And it is a particular one, so the longitude of ascending node is... Uh, special and it's in a weird middle range orbit. It'd be a good scanning orbit, very good scanning orbit if we had a scanner, but that is higher technology. 
So, yep, okay, that is the first thing. We are saving up for the R&D building. Well, we've got enough money for the R&D building upgrade, but uh, that's technical. We want to make sure that we have some buffer, otherwise we won't be able to launch rockets at all. Uh, so, well, I mean, we could pick up more contracts and that could fund it, but ultimately what we want is uh, the precision engineering with this parabolic antenna, and we can get, we don't need this miniaturization to get to it, but that's 160 science, so maybe our little science, uh, my, our little probe can get the science, I doubt it though, we've just got the thermometer, barometer, and accelerometer. I think I'm mixing up stock in this again. Anyway, we will see. So I'm gonna move the Moonsat up. The Lynx S2 is being built, and that might help us get to those Kerbals who are stranded, but it might not have enough Delta V. We'll have to see about that. This one was the recovered one, and so I can probably add that to a new rocket, but that will be for later. I really should add transfer window planner, but we'll get rough transfer windows for Earth to Venus and Earth to Mars. Mars is coming up. So we should build a new Mars probe, but then our comms, we got porcupine the comms. And our, that's the way, my way of saying we're going to have a whole lot of antennae and hopefully their combined power will be enough, right? So yeah, that will be the plan for that, that we should get that going too. I think that'll be next. Yep, okay, daytime launch. I've reduced the ablator to 40 out of 50 units on the heat shield, by the way. We'll see how that works. Uh, throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. Up we go. Surface thrust weight ratio of 1.3, by the way, for this. Okay, we should be through max Q and everything. Got some roll issue. Uh, actually, we don't have any roll control on this stage. Let's not talk about that. Should probably have fins, technically speaking. Okay, and... Separation and ignition. Seems a little bit early for the fairings, so we'll hang on to them for now. Okay, I'm going a bit low for some reason, but anyway, fairing set. Went shallow this time. We seem to be recharging, so that's not a problem. And we're not even taking advantage of the hibernating warp right now. Okay, let's get the longer range antennae ready. And getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. Well, that's a weird apoapsis because we cut it so close to the atmosphere. Okay, well, we have enough to get there. It's just a, just a matter of whether we can get back after getting into the specified orbit. I mean, 4,659 will get us into the orbit that they wanted. The question is coming back from that. Of course, there could be other things like engine failures and stuff like that. Good complicate matters. But we want to get into that particular polar orbit, that one right there. And yeah, our phase is not ideal for this. NASA would have a particular time to launch for this sort of deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to capture Lucent and Pirouette at the top. Yep. It's going to be interesting. And... Ignition. Yeah, not great because we're practically at our apoapsis when doing this burn, so we're going to use a little bit more thanks to that. Okay, that's the end of that stage. A little bit of surplus kerosene because of the boil off from the oxygen, I suppose. We could... Well, we can't use that anymore. No, no. But I was thinking, we got a lot of MMH and Mon3 that we're not using in that stage, but we'll... That's going to be too slow. So, next. Okay, we've got our transfer. 
that things are not quite right because of the inefficiency of our timing. So let's just, uh, no, no, let's fix up the mid course adjustment and use that to get us in the right place. See, the problem is we aren't going to be at apoapsis to correct this inclination issue. We need to be right around here-ish, which is not as good as being at apoapsis to turn the orbit. Uh, yeah, we're just going to get this contract done, it looks like. I don't think with all the inclination stuff we're doing, well, at least we'll get something done. So let's make this adjustment that we have to do. I'll just keep this rolling. We do have to do the re-entry, but let's see if we can do with something lighter then. Make it a little bit quicker. Okay, mid-course adjustment is done. Probably a little bit off, but not so much that it's going to change things, maybe? Well, we'll find out. Only 150 meters per second to capture around the moon. Funny loop-de-loops that we're doing here. We got plenty of comms around here. Okay, there's the moon. Oh, the camera's slipping. And ignition. Okay, let me just go kill rotation. And as soon as the apoapsis looks like it's in a good place, I'll stop. Has to be below 68,000 kilometers. I'll take that. 56 degrees we have to correct. We'll just go for the plan and then we'll make adjustments on the assumption that we're not going to be able to bring this back given the delta V here. So let me just check the science here. There is a recovery value. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to recover this. <laughs> uh, so yes, okay, I was not misremembering from stock. There is a recovery value. It was from the previous episode of this. So, okay. Yeah, so we do want to recover this, but we aren't going to be able to. Alas. And ignition. Okay, monumental inclination burn is done. Hopefully that will be within acceptable parameters. Okay, on to the periapsis again to bring the orbit down. Actually, we could bring that periapsis down first from this apoapsis. This engine still has 34 ignitions at 40 total. And basically the circularization burn. But it definitely seems like I was wildly off on my estimates for how much we would need. Well, let's see if at any point it decides that we're in a good orbit for it. Oh, it's happy with that. All right. But uh, we basically need everything just for this. Okay, but at least we got that contract done. And with 200 meters per second, it's not doable to get this back over to Earth, even though the probe itself has hydrazine RCS available. That's not going to be enough. If we wanted to eject out of this orbit, we'd need... Well... We could probably do that more efficiently, but we're talking about more than 600 to get back to Earth atmosphere. So this just becomes a relay satellite and has little relay dishes. That was always going to be a possibility. And so here it is in a polar orbit, reasonably high, and we'll leave it be. So I still need to do a re-entry contract, and that is still the next contract that we want to do. Okay, I haven't changed the probe at the top there, but I've taken off the previous stage and we've now got a 12 kN engine, the SE12KH, that also uses MMH and MON3, but it uh, has more thrust because we need it because we're using it as a second stage here to get to orbit, and it has 314 seconds vacuum ISP. Uh, so that is the engine we're using, otherwise we still got the solar panels, the surface mount antenna. We probably don't need the relay antenna. Uh, though maybe uh, that'll help. Maybe we'll just leave the relay in tonight. 
uh, I could see this uh, remaining in orbit and that deorbiting itself. In fact, uh, yeah, I'm going to set enough hydrazine to deorbit that much. I think so. Let's give it just a little bit more though. Get some margin in. Okay, so now I have altered it. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll leave that in orbit as another satellite and we'll just deorbit this top bit. That will be the plan anyway. I'm not 100% sure how much delta V the, the thing at the top has, but we that we will go with that. But I need now to pick an engine here and I can't use one of the shear strut engine pack engines because it's my policy not to use uh, more than one of those on the launch and we already have one up there. So I'm thinking about what options we have. Previously we had uh, like unlock Skyforce, but that's not very efficient. And of course we had the eBay engine as I call it. And otherwise we don't have sea level engines unlocked right now. I'm looking at either the Able E2 and using four of those or an Aeon 1 and using just two. So the Able E2 is 53.8 kilonewtons, it's 80 kilograms. Uh, this is uh, heavier, if we just use two, that's heavier than using four of these. Uh, this has better sea level and vacuum ISP, and it's 422 unlock cost. This one, it's about the same price if we use two of them. Has the benefit of being methane and oxygen, it has slightly higher vacuum ISP. Um, 350, uh, 335 versus 328, so it's a little bit better in vacuum. And it'll give better thrust if we use two of these than four of those. Uh, I think four of those will do. So I, I, I'm i going with the kerosene option here. Just one ignition on that engine. Yeah, both of them just have one ignition. It'll be lighter. And I think the ISP benefit of the Aeon 1 isn't that great. So, I mean, it's just seven seconds of ISP. So, yep, we'll unlock this one. Tight little stage here. Sort of just barely. The thrust wave ratio at the end is pretty high. Well, we'll see. Hopefully this will work out. We're just barely at the delta V requirement. So we'll of course have to release the fairing before going with the second stage. And... Oh, E2 is the engine name. Well, we can't... It's for Rocket RS1. I mean, yeah, at least the Aeon has a better name. We should pay up for that, maybe. Uh, so this is not Moonset. This is just Reentry 2, I guess I'll call it. And I don't know what to call the rocket. <laughs> Able. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's uh, it's ABL, right? Okay. Let's uh, build one of those and see how it works. At least it shouldn't take too much of our time here. Oh, I guess we do have enough for the R&D building upgrade. Let's get that started. Yeah, I'm confident enough of that. And so that'll take 4 and 48 days. So we've got that going. But we can't do a crude launch right now. Uh, well, at least I don't think so. We do have the links ready, so maybe. Maybe it's okay. We already paid for the other links too. So maybe we could. But the launchers are pretty expensive too for those. Okay, well, we don't need any particular inclinations, so let's just time warp till morning. All right. And throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. Looks like four engines to me, and go. Boom is definitely better from some angles than others. Okay, high thrust weight ratio part. Uh, 
Okay, fairings. Separation and ignition. Oh, well, we should be able to get to orbit just fine. Let's get RCS on the job here. Get the... Well, we'll wait until space to get the extra antennae out. Since we're going to use this as a commsat, basically, I, I guess it can still work as a commsat even if it doesn't have a controller, right? But since we're going to use this stage as a commsat, we'll try and get it into a high orbit before decoupling the payload there. Or as high an orbit as we can with the fuel that we have, of course. I just don't want it so tight that it's basically useless. Okay, let's say 500-ish kilometers is fine for now. Let's go over to Apoapsis and circularize. I'm even gonna arm the parachutes now, just in case. And circularization. Actually, we'll go for more than circular. We'll just try and boost that up. We'll leave a little bit in there as a formality. Okay. Um, it's a good time for a deorbit burn. Uh, well, soon enough. So let's eject off the payload. It does seem to have comms. And kill rotation will be fine. We actually do want to point prograde because the relevant thrusters are backwards. And this may be the slowest the open. Whatever happened to our. I guess it's labeled junk. I don't know if it's gonna work as a relay satellite if it's labeled junk. Shoot. We may bump into. Oh, there it goes. Let me see. Reversed. Uh, no, I want retrograde. Just do it that way. That way I can just throttle up. It's gonna take a while, it looks like. These are only 40 Newton thrusters. Oh, I guess we should do it at Apoapsis. Well, uh... Oh, we had some science here. I think the science got buried. Because when I increase the size of the fuel tank... Um... I don't think I can reach the science anymore. I forgot to action group it. I can see some of it poking out there, but that's not the collider for it, so... Oh, wait. Okay, oh, there. Um, log pressure data. Oh, we might get some science out of it. Uh, Where's the next one, though? Can't see it to select it. I got lucky with that one. Accelerometer, log gravity data. Well, we only get 0.5 for that. Uh, thermometer should be over here somewhere. Okay, log temperature. Oh, no benefit to recovering that one. Possibly we already did that. Okay, well, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of science. But the question is, do we have enough fuel to actually deorbit this? That is what we're finding out now. Well, we are coming over North America here. There's California. There's Mexico. Yeah, it's looking good for the deorbit burn, but... We're going to end up coming down on the nighttime side, so that's a little bit of a downer. Okay, that's probably enough to bring us down. Alright, so we only need half of the hydrazine, which is good because we need the other half to maintain control. Gonna have smart ASS on, I guess now it would be surface positive. Because we've inverted this core. We've got the parachutes ready to go. So, yep, it's just a matter of coming down now. So, Smart ASS is set. I, even if we lose communication, I shouldn't need to do anything. And we, in fact, lost communication. <laughs> Typical. I trust it, yeah, it read us as at orbital velocity, so all we have to do is land or splash down. Maybe this will unlock some other contracts? I don't know. I doubt it, though. 
Okay, we are certainly coming down. Here are the flame effects. Once again, very focused on the procedural tank at the top, even though the heat shield should be covering that, <laughs> and the early control core, but you can see sort of the flames are very focused on the fuel tank. <laughs> I don't I don't get these effects sometimes. Well, as long as things don't blow up, it's fine by me. Okay. We are through the worst of it. We are currently apparently dumping hydrazine left and right, but again, I'm not touching smart ASS or changing anything. Oh, well, we're not getting comms back here. Let's just hope that the parachutes work. Okay, parachutes are out. And full parachute deployment brings us to... Well, a safe enough speed anyway, 7 meters per second. Alright, splash down. Oh, uh, it's sinking. Recover! Recover! Uh, um, normal recovery, because we need to fulfill the contract. I forget. Uh, no, I guess it's not necessary. But anyway, I'm not going to re- Well, I might reuse this. Nah, I doubt it. It'll be fine. It's not that expensive. I was just in such a hurry so that it wouldn't sink on me or something. Okay, so we got a little bit of science. But most importantly, we got the contract done. So we've got two rescue contracts and then some interplanetary contracts and the most important thing is the interplanetary stuff because we've got that uh, window coming up but it doesn't pay that well. It's only 28,000 altogether and we've already got the advance so yeah we, we want to make it trim. We want to have a whole lot of antennae and but we are also unlocking the research. Well that would be too late right because the windows but we have time to fulfill the contract with that if it turns out that our first attempt doesn't work so i think we will save that for next time we will try and do the mars mission and we'll have a lot of antennae hopefully the combining of which will give us enough range uh, to make it to mars but we'll have to see all we have to do is get signs from space around mars not that hard but yeah we'll see how that goes so with that thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time